It is a tradition to build Virak Kal Nato Temple in Palantamalan Nadu as a memory of the heroes who sacrificed their lives in the battlefield. If only a stone is planted as a memorial, it will be given as Middle Stone Temple. Also, if an idol of any deity is established and raised as a temple, it will be given as school. There was a school temple near the village called Tirapurambayam, on the north bank of Mani Er2, half northwest of Kudantai city. It commemorates the Gunga king Prithivapati who lost his life in a great battle in that area. World history connoisseurs know that certain battles like the Battle of Waterloo, Battle of Panabet, Battle of Blesik changed the course of history. Tirapurambayam fight is so important as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned. The battle took place about a hundred years before the time of our story. It is necessary for all Tamil people to know its history. The glory of the Chola clan was eclipsed for about five or six hundred years after the Chola kings like Karakal Valavan Parunakilai, Ilanchet Seni, the Dithid Sempian, and others ruled the Chola country. The Pandyas in the south and the Pallavas in the north became powerful and encroached upon the Cholas. Eventually, the Cholas could not bear the Pandyas' harassment and were forced to move from their long-time capital of Varayur. Those who moved like that came to a town called Payare which was near Kudanda. However, Vrayur did not give up its right to be their capital. He did not give up the title of Chicken Minister. Among the ancient Chola kings, Vijayalaya Chola had unparalleled valor. He fought at the forefront of several battlefields and suffered 96 injuries. He was sung by the later Asthan poets as Nengonda Tunudan Malumaru through Funkonda Vetri Privalanam and Punnuru Thanrarumana Punanaga Tunurum Arunja Sumanthanam. His son Aditha Chola became a great hero equal to his father. He also participated in many battles and became famous. Vijayalaya Chola reached old age and passed away to his son. At that time, the Pandyas and the Pallavas were at enmity and frequent fights were going on. The name of the Pandya king of that time was Varagunavarman, the Pallava king was named Aparajathavarman. The conflicts between these two emperors mostly took place in the Chola country. The Chola nation suffered like a rooster caught in the middle of a fight between an elephant and an elephant. Chola people suffered. However, Vijayalaya Chola used these times to his advantage. In every battle he attended some party with his small force. Although there were alternate victories and defeats, the Chola country became increasingly bellicose. Everyone knows that many tributaries branch off from the Kaveri and enrich the Chola country. All the Aklai rivers branch south of Kaveri. The river that separates from Kaladam and flows between the Kaveri and Kaladam is one and the same, it is called Mani Yar. On the north bank of this river, near Tirapurambayam village, the final battle between Pandyas and Pallavas took place. The forces on both sides were almost equal. Prithivapati of the Ganges had come to accompany the Pallava Aparajathavarman. Aditha Chola also joined Aparajathavarman's party. Compared to the Pandyan and Pallava forces, the Chola dynasty was very small. However, Aditha knew that if the Pandyans won this time, the Chola dynasty would be completely destroyed. Therefore, like the river Kaveri mixing with the great ocean, he had added his small army to the great army of Pallavara. The battlefield was spread from ear to ear. Four types of armies were involved in the war namely Rata, Gaja, Duraga and Padatis. The four directions shook as the elephants struck each other like a mountain colliding with a mountain. The hilts in the horsemen's hands flashed like lightning bolts as the horses dashed against each other like a storm clashing with a storm. Chariot collided with chariot and flew in all directions. All the Dikkha Dikanthas trembled with the clanging sounds that arose when the swords of the warriors clashed with swords and swords with swords. After three days of non-stop fighting, the entire battlefield was a pool of blood. Dead elephants and horses were strewn in that sea. Parts of broken chariots floated in the sea like the planks of an overturned ship. Thousands of soldiers were killed on both sides. After three days of this demanding battle, only a part of the Pallavar army remained. The rest were also very tired. The brave warriors of the Pandian country, like those who had bought a boon that knows no weariness, came and attacked more and more. 
Mandira consultation took place in Appar Rajathavarman's tent. The generals also consulted with the three kings Appar Rajathan, Prativapati, and Adithan. They decided that they could not resist any longer and that it would be better to retreat and go to the north bank for refuge. In such a situation, a miracle happened on the battlefield. Vijayalaya Kolan, debilitated by old age, with ninety wounds on his body and unable to stand up due to a fatal wound in his legs, somehow reached the battlefield. The roar of the old lion revived the remaining soldiers of the Pallavar party, who realized that if the Pallava army retreated north of Kala Dam, the Chola nation could not intervene for long. An elephant. Give me an elephant. He said. They said, our whole army of elephants has perished, not a single one has escaped. Bring a horse, at least a horse. He said. They said, not a single living horse has survived. Are both of the Chola warriors still alive? If so, come. Vijayalayan screamed. Instead of two, two hundred people came forward. Two men who have pain in their shoulders and manure in their chests, lift me up with your shoulders. The others come two by two behind. If the two who carry me fall, the two who come behind pick me up. Said the brave warrior. Just then two Bhimasanars came forward and carried Vijayalayan on their shoulders. Go. Go to the battlefront. He roared. Somewhere on the battlefield, fighting was still going on. The southern Marathas kept attacking the Kiha Nadars and forcing them to retreat. Sitting on the shoulders of both of them, Vijayalayan went to the war front. Holding two long swords in both hands and swinging them like Tirumal Sakrayutham, he burst into the midst of the enemy. No one could stop him. All the way he entered, the bodies of the enemy kept piling up on both sides. Yes. Many soldiers who had retreated came forward to witness this miracle. At first they were a little stunned to see Vijayalaya's supernatural prowess. Then, encouraging each other, they entered the battlefield. That's it, Goddess Jayalakshmi's mercy has turned to this side. The leaders of the Pallavar forces retreated and gave up the idea of going north to Kala Dam. All the three ministers entered the battlefield with their own stalwarts. After a while the Pandian soldiers started retreating. King Ganga Prativapati, after performing many deeds in the war, left his glory and went to hero's paradise. As a memorial to such a hero, a heroic stone was placed in Aparka Lam. Then they also took the school. The battlefield of such a terrible and terrible battle lay barren of grass for some time. People don't go there. After some time the forest started to grow there. The forest was thick around the school temple, and foxes lived in the bushes. Owls and coots roosted in the dark branches. Eventually, no one stopped going to the Apalapada temple. Hence, the temple was falling apart day by day. During the time our story takes place, it lies in ruins. All were Kadayan arrived at such a dilapidated school temple in the dark. The guards on the edge of the upper hall of the temple looked at him fearfully. But that heroic Vaishnava Chikamanya who is afraid? He jumped on the school hall. He sat under the cover of a branch overhanging the hall. He was looking carefully from all sides. His eyes had the power to see through thick darkness. His ears were likewise sharp enough to hear even the tiniest of music. A lady in the dark, two ladies, it was three times. The darkness that surrounded him completely crushed him and suffocated him. Every now and then I heard something rustling among the forest trees. There is a woodpecker climbing a tree. There's an owl screeching. This page screams a coton. A bird, afraid of the woodchuck, flutters its wings and flies to the upper branch. Lo and behold, the foxes started howling. He heard something overhead. He looked up, a squirrel, a wolf, or some other such small animal leaps upon the branches. A small part of the sky was visible through the gaps in the tree branches. The stars hum, hum, and twinkled and peered down. The stars of the sky seemed to be befriending him amidst that lonely solitude. So Alvarkadian looked at the stars peering through the branches and spoke in a low voice. Oh! Stars! Today you look like those who sneer and wink at the ignorance of the people of Earth. 
You have reason to laugh. You have seen the great battle that took place in this same place a hundred years ago, and the blood shed here for a long time after the battle. Why are men like this? You wonder why you should hate each other. You wonder why you should spill human blood like this. This is called heroism. A man is dead a hundred years and yet they praise him with enmity. This schoolhouse is the schoolhouse of the enemy. They are going to gather near the schoolhouse of the enemy and think. To sneer at the living in the name of the dead. Yes stars of heaven. Why will you not laugh? Laugh well. My God. Was it in vain to come here? Is tonight going to be like this? Are the expected people not going to be here? Did I miss here? Did I not pay attention? Or did those Makaasta signalers change their minds and go somewhere else? What a disappointment! If I am only deceived today, I will find myself one day. Unforgivable! Ah! There seems a little light. What is it? The light fades, no doubt it seems again. There comes someone with a burning torch. Nay, two come. The wait was not in vain. Both the arrivals crossed the school and went a little further. They stopped at a gap in the middle of the thick forest. One sat down, he had a sprained hand and was looking around. No doubt he was expecting someone's arrival. After a while two more people came. They must have been here before, if not, can you find a way in this dark, dense forest? Those who came first and those who came behind talked about something. But none of it fell on the ears of all were Cadian. Ah, it seems that there is no benefit in coming so hard. They don't even know the identity of the people. Then came two more, those who came first and those who came last spoke to each other. One of the last arrivals was carrying a bag. He unwrapped it and poured out its contents. The gold coins glistened in the dim light. The Kosha man laughed like a madman and said, Guys! We are going to take the Chola treasure to the Chola kingdom. Isn't this great fun? After saying that, he laughed again. Ravi Dasar! Don't make noise, let's talk a little more slowly, said one. Aha! Uh -huh. What if we talk like this here? Foxes, wild dogs and cougars will listen to us from the goats. Fortunately, they will not go and tell anyone. Said Ravi Dasan. Wouldn't it be better to speak a little more slowly, though? Then they started talking softly. It seemed to Alvarkadian that it was futile to sit on the hall and not listen to them. Get down from the hall and stand near the meeting place and listen. The resulting danger must also be dealt with, thinking in this way. When Alwarkadian tried to get down from the hall, his body rubbed against the branches and there was a rustling sound. Two of the men who had been talking suddenly jumped up and roared, Who's there? Alwarkadian's heartbeat stopped for a while. They have no choice but to flee. Even if you run, you can hear the rustle in the forest. They might come and catch him, wouldn't they? At that moment, one of the Kotans raised his shoe and snarled Umum. -um. 